Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Mariana and in this video I want to talk about a book titled Hans Sharun and the Development of Small Apartment Floor Plans by Markus Peter and Ulrich Tillmann, published recently by Park Books and Akademie der Kunst in Berlin. Markus Peter is a well-known Swiss architect, founding partner of Miley Peter Architects and also professor of architecture and construction at ETH Zurich. Ulrike Tillmann is also an architect and architectural historian and she is currently pursuing a PhD at Humboldt University in Berlin. The volume takes a look at the repertoire of drawings, mainly floor plans, for the residential high-rises Romeo and Julia, designed and built by Sharon in Stuttgart between 1954 and 1959. Romeo is an 18 storey building with six apartments per floor accessed via a central corridor, while Julia has a lace color like footprint and is conceived as an access balcony building with a corpus staggered into four, seven and 11 stories. The majority of original drawings and documents considered by the authors is archived in the Sharun archive at Akademie der Kunst in Berlin, where Sharun himself was president between 1956 and 1968 and where he initiated the collection of 20th century architecture. He gifted his own estates to the institution in 1972, shortly before his death. The authors reconstruct the planning process of these two buildings from mostly unpublished documents in order to open a new chapter in the study of floor plans in modern German architecture, and also to shed light on the teamwork of researchers, designers and other experts through which these residential layouts came about. Let's start by taking a look at the table of contents. I won't talk about each chapter because I really hope you are interested in the topic and will decide to get the book and have a chance to read it, so I don't want to spoil the content. But let me just give you a taste of what the book is about. Among the many sketches and drawings in the archive, the authors have selected some that tend to be disregarded by historians. They're not final drawings and what we see was never actually built. But they are a good starting point to better understand the issues Sharon was interested in unpacking through design. Namely, lighting and orientation, the study of different access systems, and the study of optimized dwelling processes. These sketches are the starting point for further research and have been nicely printed on a light paper that recalls the sketch paper used by architects. They were printed big enough so that we can take our time and study each of them and they are followed by a chapter about the planning process where the authors trace Sharun's work, how he came to get the job from the construction company, the back and forth with the planning commission, and with the housing authority representatives. But also the messiness of the design process, the errors, the failures, and finally the compromises to get the high rises built. For example, it is quite interesting to compare the initial plans for the Julia high-rise with later versions. We discover that the most radical innovations by Sharun were in direct contravention of the specifications for housing for subsidized housing. Such was the case with the parents alcove. The housing authority representatives also objected that the bathroom and toilets did not receive direct light and air from windows. In order to comply with such requirements, Sharun ended up abandoning the second balcony and also the idea of a central core. He pushed the kitchen and the bathroom to face the access balcony where he could add the necessary windows. In the final plans, the parents' room is the second largest in the apartment and thanks to the double access, there is still a certain degree of spatial continuity with the living room. He kept the work niche that allowed to multiply the spaces for reading, resting, working, conversing, eating and enjoying fresh air. These apartments are relatively small, between 61 and 65 square meters, in both initial and later drawings. And again, let's remember that they were supposed to be occupied by a family of four or five. In the following chapter, Genealogy of the Dwelling, 
We read about Sharun's interest in the medieval German townhouse and low German farmhouse, and in the collective way of life of the Middle Ages, when the overlapping of living and working was possible thanks to a central space, a collective living space with a cooking niche and a fireplace. In the chapter titled Physiology of Movement, we read about another influential reference for Sharun, namely Alexander Klein and his graphical method for analyzing lines of traffic in small apartment floor plans. Then again we see a change of paper and we can have a look at historical pictures, model, construction pictures and finally images of the two high rises completed in 1959. In the three chapters that follow, we see the repertoire of floor plans developed by Sharun for the Institute of Civil Engineering since 1947. Uh, there are nine uh, basic types uh, that influenced the uh, work on the Romeo and Julia high rises. The authors analyzed these plans in relation to the work of Alexander Klein again, of Walter Neusil and of Hugo Herring, who was Sharun's mentor. The issues discussed relate to, again, lighting and orientation, access, spatial continuity, dwelling processes, polygonal apparatus, and organic construction. Now it sounds like a lot, but it all makes perfect sense in the text in relation to Sharon's work. The very final chapter is again marked by a change of paper and we get to see contemporary photographs of Romeo and Julia by architectural photographer uh, Georg Erni. I wish there were some photos of the interior of the apartments. It would be interesting to see if the original layouts have been preserved or how they have been transformed. Uh, I guess for now we will just look at the exterior, that apart from a few visible alterations of the balconies uh, looks quite pristine. Uh, in my opinion this is a very good book and I certainly recommend it. Uh, it is very well researched, uh, the narrative both written and visual makes for an interesting and compelling reading. It allows for further readings uh, as it has a good bibliography and the images and the documents are well credited. Allow me also to say a few words about the object because we cannot avoid judging the book also by the cover. Booksellers don't love white books because they get easily dirty. But that said, uh, this is a very nice object. The format is quite generous we have 230 pages, uh, 33 by 23 centimeters. It is a well printed and well binded book. It won't easily disintegrate. And also it is quite nicely designed from a graphic point of view. I hope you get the book and you have a chance to explore all its interesting content. I also hope this video was useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.